I changed the title of my talk a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to talk about uh, implementation of non-universal star formation prescription in galaxy formation simulations. I'm doing this work at the University of Chicago with uh, Andrei Kurtzov and Nick Nedin. Yeah, and um, star formation prescription is uh, as important part of uh, stellar feedback loop as a recipe for feedback itself. And uh, the feedback models are being uh, refined for years. We had a, a special session on this, and we see that these models become more and more complicated. However, for star formation prescription, uh, for star formation, we use the same prescription which we used uh, 20 years ago. Basically, we uh, parameterize star formation rate as uh, an efficiency at which a gas is converted into stars uh, at freefall time. And for this parameter, star formation efficiency, we assume, uh, we assume that it's universal uh, at level of few percent. And we confine by hand star formation only to regions of cold and dense gas. Uh, so these uh, temperature and density thresholds are set, usually set by hand. Sometimes other thresholds applied, like uh, gravitational boundiness or convergence of velocities. But the general picture is uh, usually the same. So we assume uh, constant star formation efficiency. And this is what we have in simulations and what, what's happening in real life. In real GMCs, we see something like this. So picture is much more complicated. Star, stars are forming in uh, supersonic turbulence. There's a, a huge variety of physical processes involved at these scales. So relevant scales are uh, from several parsecs to several hundred parsecs. And these scales are not resolved in modern um, galaxy formation simulations. And all this complicated physics is absorbed into this uh, simple model of, uh, uniform, uh, of uni universal star formation efficiency. Whether it's um, a valid assumption, whether it's fair or not, it's questionable. However, uh, simulations of such objects, of GMCs, can shed some light on this question. And this, is, this work is being done. Uh, so people basically just uh, simulate uh, supersonic turbulence in uh, periodic boxes with a high resolution. They add magnetic fields. They add self-gravity. And they uh, mimic star formation as a uh, thin particles. And they can just uh, calculate how, many, how much mass is formed in these boxes and assign uh, star formation efficiency for different conditions. And, and these authors, Padon and, Padon and the collaborators, uh, a few years ago found the general trend that, uh, with, uh, e, that star formation efficiency exponentially uh, decreases with increasing importance of turbulence in comparison to gravity in such simulations. Uh, so they, they express this uh, um, importance as the ratio of uh, relevant time scales. So for gravity, it's freefall time. For uh, turbulence, it's uh, turbulent crossing time. And if expressed in terms of this parameter, this dependence of efficiency, it basically is just exponential. Um, similar simulations done by other authors basically agrees with this general trend. And so this is good. Uh, this model uh, tells, it, tells us that um, uh, efficiency do vary, does vary with the uh, with varying turbulent properties of GMCs. Uh, this model, in principle, can be implemented in um, uh, galaxy formation simulations uh, if we had some uh, knowledge about turbulence on scales of GMC. So freefall time is easily accessible because it's it depends only on on density. On the other hand, uh, crossing time depends on uh, unresolved uh, turbulent velocities. So, uh, as I said, scales of GMCs are not resolved, and therefore uh, the turbulence must be treated by a subgrid model. Such models do exist. Uh, they're well known in engineering, in uh, simulations of uh, terrestrial flows. And uh, we implemented uh, one of such models, nicely described by uh, Schmidt and collaborators. Uh, basically, in this model, apart from uh, basic hydronomical quantities like density, momentum, and energies, uh, <coughs> A new field is self-consistently evolved. So this field is associated with the uh, turbulent, un unresolved turbulent energy. And mm -hmm. the entire set of equations uh, looks like this. So don't, don't look at the equations. <laughs> look, look at the colors. So black colors are basic inviscid uh, hydrodynamics. And all blue terms are those which arise from uh, the subgrid turbulence. So the, uh, uh, this is just to show that 
the model is quite complicated. There is quite a bit of uh, machinery behind it. And uh, this model includes, um, so the turbulence is coupled to resolve motions. Uh, in, it's sourced by turbulent cascade from resolve motions into subgrid scales. It can be sourced also from small scales by supernova. Um, it, it, takes into, uh, it takes into account uh, turbulent pressure, turbulent diffusion of energy, and also uh, in this model, turbulence decays into heat uh, over a physically motivated time scale. So, uh, as you might guess, I uh, work with ART code, and I implemented this model in ART, and output of this model I used to um, predict star formation efficiency. I uh, use it to simulate um, isolated disk galaxy using uh, Agora initial conditions. And this, what I have, this is the gas density and gas temperature. In uh, uh, this particular simulation, I had resolution of, uh, of 40 parsecs. So this is the scale of uh, the largest GMCs. And uh, the turbulence at these scales is modeled by the subgrid model I just showed you. And basically, what this model does, it takes uh, the disk dynamics and predicts how many unresolved turbulence is there in each cell. So using this information, we can uh, uh, we, we can we can deduce uh, crossing time and use this crossing time as an input into this uh, model for star formation efficiency and, uh, and yeah and, and to show uh, the power of this model let's consider for example these two spiral arms this one and this one so uh, these two spiral arms has have um, comparable densities and comparable temperature so if we apply um, usual star formation prescription based on uh, uh, temperature and density thresholds, we'll get that um, th these two arms form stars equally efficient. However, let's see what this model does. So this is the predicted uh, star formation efficiency, and we can see that one of the arms do form stars, and, well, the other almost doesn't. And the difference is in uh, different properties of turbulence. So the model predicts a uh, different level of turbulent velocities in these two uh, spiral arms. And now we can compare this distribution of star formation efficiency with what is observed. Uh, so I, I, I plot the distribution of gas surface density versus um, the star formation rates uh, at, at scale of individual cells. So the first noticeable feature is that star formation efficiency varies quite a bit by orders of magnitude. So the diagonal uh, lines are constant uh, efficiencies per freefall time, and we can see that in my simulation, uh, it reaches values as high as 10%, while the most of the gas, stuff from gas sitting at level of few percent. And, and we can also see that um, the, um, the threshold uh, of temperature uh, arises naturally because uh, star formation is possible only in supersonic turbulence and therefore in cold medium. And we can just compare this to what is observed in local GMCs. So local GMCs uh, do fall on the upper envelope so this, we, we should remember that local GMCs is a quite, a, um, uh, quite biased sample because it's the largest, it's brightest GMCs, and not surprisingly, they're also the most uh, efficient. Uh, more fair sample would be uh, um, extra uh, um, blind searches for GMCs or extragalactic results, and these uh, extragalactic star formation maps do agree with this general distribution. And for field comparison, we can uh, average the star formation rates over larger patches, say, uh, parsec size parsecs, and, and then uh, compared to observed uh, can you catch me relation. And um, without any tuning, this model do predict the uh, correct normalization and overall trend. So this, I think this is quite uh, promising. Yeah, and I'll leave you with my summary. So um, this turbulent model of star formation do predict uh, variation of star formation efficiency. It introduces, it, it introduces uh, um, natural threshold of temperature without any artificial threshold set by hand, and the overall distribution do agree, does agree with the uh, observations. Thank you. Question mark. Uh, when you're making your, your surface density maps, especially the 40 parsecs, can you clarify a little bit more how you're defining I, 
I just take the uh, cell. I know the density in the cell, so I multiply it by size, and I assume that it's a uh, uh, surface density. Okay. So it's, lo it's local surface density. Okay, so it's, so, so it's simply the, the volume density of a cell multiplied by its size. Yeah. Sure. Sure, yeah, it's depend it depends on sizes of uh, GMCs. Yeah, 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 that's true. Uh, uh, except for those, those are the largest ones, so they're the most of, I mean, those are larger than my cells. Yeah, uh, it's not one to one comparison, but.